the Bob Hope Show. Transcribed with Wes Brown and his band of renown. And yours truly, High Everback. Our special guests, Marilyn Maxwell and Jack Kirkwood. And here he is, Bob Hope. Overdo it, huh? Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're doing our show at the Pantages Theater here in Hollywood. A special show for all the letter carriers of this area. It's a great thrill for me to be up here facing this audience of noble people, the letter carriers. And I know I'll get laughs from them tonight. They're all sitting. I usually do my show for an army audience, but just, just about the same, a civilian infantry. <laughs> To give you an idea how much these fellas walk, one day a carrier was homesick and all he had to do was open his locker and his shoes made the rounds without him. And I want you people at home to know that when you send a fragile package through the mail and it winds up all smashed and broken, it's not the mail carriers to do it. That's a desk job. I'm with you, boy. I always know when my mailman is at the door, I hear two large crashes. That's his arches falling. <laughs> Sometimes he makes a mistake with the mail. Like the other day, I got a letter that read, I think you're wonderful, and I see all your pictures. Please send me a lock of your tail. <laughs> You know, really, you know these letter carriers are about the only people left in the country who are walking. Everyone else is running. <laughs> the candidates are really getting around. I'm having a little trouble trying to pick the man I want to vote for. I'm still trying to figure out what Coolidge was talking about. <laughs> of course, this will be a big voting year because the population has increased so tremendously. The candidates are very conscious about the incre over the increased birth rate. In fact, I hear every time a doctor slaps a new baby, a bell rings in campaign headquarters. <laughs> but this whole population growth is a fallacy. It's just that with so many television sets going, everyone is seeing double. <laughs> That's the kind of the television. Where'd they go? <laughs> it's an awful feeling when you look out and you're alone like that. Like doing a supper show in Eagle Rock. <laughs> Los Angeles now has two automobiles to every person. Wouldn't be so bad that they try to drive both cars at the same time. Thank you, pedestrian. Thank you. Hey, Marilyn. Yes, Bob? Marilyn Maxwell. There you are. Yes, sir. A little applause for the maiden of mirth and music. <laughs> Maxwell with a Cadillac body. There she is. Hey, isn't it a thrill doing our show tonight for these letter carriers? Oh, it is. But I thought we were going to do the show from the Hollywood High School Auditorium. Well, we were, but there aren't enough parking facilities at the high school. All those kids drive cars over there. Say, did you notice the kids parked on... <laughs> What's in there? I didn't see did you notice the kids' cars parked on the school lot, all those hot rods? Oh, yes, and what cars? Some of them have no fenders, no bumpers, no hoods, no tops, no bottoms. I know. On the way over here, I was almost run over by a kid driving a 1952 carburetor. <laughs> Wouldn't have been so bad, but he had four guys riding with him. You know, I bet, I bet you were cute in school, Bob. Oh, I was a wheel. As a matter of fact, in my freshman year, I got three letters. Really? Yeah, they were from the principal asking me to leave school. <laughs> but I think that high school is a very important stage in a boy's life. Now, what do you mean, Bob? Well, it's in high school that a boy decides his future course in life, whether he'll go with a herd or step out and do something daring and bold, something dangerous. Well, like what? Like a letter carrier delivering a draft notice. <laughs> Way, 
Hey, Bob, what are we going to do on the show tonight? Well, I thought we'd try a little sketch right here. That is, if everybody's ready. Well, I am. How about you, Hi? Are you all set? Am yeah, well, I? Just hand me a script and listen to those golden words pour out of my mouth. Oh. You know me, High Everback, grand actor, brilliant showman, and all-around sterling character. <laughs> Steady higher, I'll cut the wire on your curling iron. <laughs> hey, Lester Brown, are you ready? Yes, sir. Well, let's have the music right tonight for a change, huh? What do you mean by that gratuitous insult? <laughs> My music is always perfect and in good taste. That's because I'm an impeccable musician. <laughs> Impeccable one. Impeccable musician. I love that. Go, Les. There's a pawn shop on a corner in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I walked up and down neath the clock. By the pawn shop on a corner in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. But I ain't got a thing left to hide. May I help you, sir? Oh, I hope so. I'd like to pawn a few things. I need some cash. Fine. You've come to the right place. Well, how much can I get for this? I, I got it in the Army. It's a good conduct medal. That'll get you $3. Then how much can I get for this? What is it? A bad conduct medal. A bad conduct medal? How'd you get that? For stealing the good conduct medal. I couldn't give you anything for that. Anything I can get will be a help. Yeah, what else do you have? Well, this might be worth a lot of money. It's a calendar with a picture of a girl on it. It's very rare. Well, what's so rare about it? She's wearing clothes. Half a buck. Make it six bits. Half a buck. Twenty-five cents. It's a deal. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get up pretty early in the morning to put one over on me, boy. <laughs> now, let's see now. Will you hock these two? Hey, excuse me for being nosy, friend, but you certainly seem desperate for this money. Yeah, I really need it. I blew all the money I had on the girl. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, I don't know. I think it was worth it. I'll never forget the first time we went out together. It was a blind date. Was she pretty? Well, I'll tell you. She was peaches, she was honey, and she cost me all my money. Cause the world round the town was her dream. Took her dancing, took her dining, till her blue eyes were shining. With a sight they never had seen. Well, I hope this blind date is pretty. He's been in the other room getting ready for an hour. I'll be right off, Robert. I'm just putting on my lips. I hope she's got two of them. <laughs> Her cousin at the factory said she was a real knockout. I hope she is. I hope I wasn't too long. No, that was worth it. Boy, you're beautiful. Well, thank you. You know, I'm kind of glad we got together. Well, you can thank your cousin Seymour. We both work at the soup factory, and he told me about you. Oh, do you work with Seymour? Oh, not exactly. He's a noodle, you see, and I'm a censor in the alphabet soup division. <laughs> oh, a censor in the alphabet soup department? Yes, after they put the letters in the can, they make me eat the naughty words. <laughs> Let's get going. We can catch a streetcar right on the corner and go to Barney's Beanery for hamburgers and take a walk in the park. Oh, now, wait a minute, Buster. I want to go to a nightclub, maybe two or three, and to some expensive restaurants. Gee, I ain't got enough money for all that. Well, why don't you go to a pawn shop and hawk a few things? Hawk a few things? Uh -huh. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you can tell this kid's never been to one. She's probably been loaded all her life. Yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, why don't you go to a pawn shop and hawk a few things? But I haven't got anything to hawk. Well, how about that ring on your finger? Oh, no, that's a special ring. I got it from Paris. It's very daring. You yeah. take it off and hold it up to the light. Well, what do you, what do you see? Marjorie Main in a French bathing suit. <laughs> Oh, it's real bugsy, I want to tell you. <laughs> well, look, make up your mind. Either you spend some money or no date. Well, I'll spend all the money I have tonight, and next time we go out, I'll hock everything I have. Now you're talking. Of course, if I do that, you may have to go out without me. Why? Well, there aren't many places to let me in in my long underwear. <laughs> I wanna star 
when you're standing near. I get a humpty dumpty feeling. All I know is I wanna sigh like I've never sighed before. Now when you're in love, they say you can tell. You're sick in my heart and you never get well. I may be the right. I wish that I knew why I feel the way I do. Am I in love? Am I in love? Well, leave it up to you. All I know is I wanna dance when I look at you. I get a tippy tappy feeling. All I know is I wanna dance like I've never danced before. My hands in a whirl, my heart's in a spin, and if I'm in love, I love the feeling. I don't know why. I'm feeling this way, but the feeling feels okay. Am I in love? Am I in love? Well, I really couldn't say. My head's in a whirl, my heart's in a spin. Tribute to the mailman of America. The players present a day in the life of a letter carrier. Curtain action music. Oh. Well, it's my first day on a new route. Maybe I'd better get acquainted with the people I'm going to be delivering mail to. Let's see. Here's the first house. Oh, good morning, ma'am. I'm your new letter carrier. Well, bless your little pouch. <laughs> well, I thought I'd say hello with my uh, first delivery store to get acquainted. Oh, that's nice. Would you like a cup of tea? No, I don't have time to slosh, but you're very kind and fast. <laughs> In fact, you're so kind, you kind of remind me of my mother. That's funny. I feel the same way about you. <laughs> now, let's see. Here's your mail. Oh, goody. It's another lesson from Arthur Murray. I'm taking a correspondence course in dancing. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, I had to, you know. Whenever I went to parties, I used to stand in the corner all by myself. But these lessons have been a big help. They have? Yes. Now I dance in the corner all by myself. Well, I'll be seeing you tomorrow if there's any mail. Oh, I hope so. There's something about mail that just makes me nostalgic. There is? Yes. If your sweet heart writes a letter to say goodbye. Daddy, Grandma. Daddy. Stand back or I'll cry all over you. Get my fat. Gee, I hate to see you so sad. Do you live here all alone? Yes, my husband's not with me anymore. Oh, it's a shame. He was such a little doll. A little doll? Yes, he was two feet tall. <laughs> I told him those hot baths would get him. <laughs> Wait a minute, your husband was only two feet tall? Oh, oh, it was no handicap. As a matter of fact, he had a very good job at the post office. What did he do there? When the corner of a stamp would come loose, he'd crawl under it with a wet sponge. Well, I certainly...
hardly hope you don't miss your husband too much. No, though he's not with me, I know he's gone to a better world. You mean... Yes, not very far. <laughs> Oh, gee, what a nice old lady. She's got all her buttons. It's just that the thread's a little loose. Well, I better get moving. Next stop is across the street. Hmm, I got a COD package. Oh, how do you do, sir? I'm your new mailman. Nice to know you, boy. Oh. Yeah. Well, how do you do? I could tell you were a mailman the minute I laid eyes on you. You could, huh? Yeah, you're carrying a load in back and one in front. Yeah. Kirkwood, aren't you? That's right. I have a COD package for you. It comes to $40 even. Oh, fine. I have the money right here. Uh, do you mind taking singles? Oh, not at all. Let's see. That was $40. Now, there's one, two, three. Say, boy, how long have you been a mailman? About 12 years. 12? Uh, mm -hmm. Very interesting. Let's see. 12, 13, 14. And <laughs> say, you know, you're a nice-looking young man. Hmm? How old are you? 37. 37? Well, that's very nice. Yes, sir. 37, 38, 39, 40. <laughs> there you are, boy. $40. Oh, thanks. Thought he had me. I'm only 36, you know. <laughs> hey, uh, let's see that package, boy. Say, those are bottles. Yeah, that's my cough medicine. All the way from Scotland. <laughs> Cough medicine, that's whiskey. Oh, I love that word. <laughs> but don't get me wrong, I don't like to drink. I do it to forget. To forget what? That I don't like to drink. <laughs> the reason for all this is my wife. What's the matter? Well, she can't leave the house. She's got to stay indoors. Oh, I'm sorry. Illness? No, the police want her. She's hot. <laughs> You're protecting her? Sure. After all, she's my wife. We've been married for 20 years. Been through an awful lot together, the little woman and me. A love like that is a very powerful thing. Sure. It can't be denied. I I wouldn't think of turning her in. You wouldn't? Not until they raise the reward. <laughs> What characters in this neighborhood, huh? Oh, morning, miss. I'm your new mailman. I have a delivery for you, and I thought we'd say hello. Hello. <laughs> Careful, you're curling a peak on my cap. Won't you come in, Mr. Mailman, and let's get real acquainted. Well, I just... Oh, I... come on. <laughs> Well, all right. Say, aren't you a Marvel Maxwell, the model? That's right. Well, didn't I see you in this month's issue of Wow magazine? Weren't you wearing a strapless evening gown with a plunging neckline that had a bare midriff and it was backless, too? That's right. I thought I recognized your face. <laughs> I think you're kind of cute. Oh, welcome to the club. <laughs> you're a darling mailman. You think so? Mm -hmm. oh. You know, the last mailman in this neighborhood was nothing to look at, but you're different. You're handsome. And you must be awfully strong to carry all that heavy mail around. Oh, shucks, that's nothing at all. <laughs> I bet you've got big muscles in your arm. Let me feel them. Well, I didn't bring them with oh. me. Oh. Come on. I wish you would. Come on. That's, that's better. See, you've got a lot of muscles in your arm. Those are goose pimples right here. <laughs> Look, Miss Maxwell, you better take your mail and let me get on my route. I'm ready to go. I'm hot. I'm, I'm oh, going. I should have. I'm so far... <laughs> I 
can't, I can't drop my oh, sock look here. I'm gone. Huh? <laughs> I'd like to do it. What, honey? I said, look at all this. It's all. Oh, you have more, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here's one from an admirer in India. An admirer in India? Uh huh. Yeah. He's a Maharaja of Tarpoon. Let's see what he says. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's mailing me an elephant for my birthday. Well, you'd better tell him to insure it. You know how things get lost in the mail. <laughs> well, goodbye, ma'am. i got to hit the oh, wall. Oh, just a I... moment. What's that? Will you mail a letter for me? Oh, certainly. It's to a friend of mine in Honolulu. Mm-hmm. Honolulu? Oh, uh-huh. yeah. What's the best way well, to send? Well, I can live in Honolulu, too, old guy. You do? Well, what is the best way to send? Well, it can go regular air mail or special delivery or special delivery air mail or registered. Well, I'll leave it up to you. And for being so sweet, this is for you. <laughs> and now, how are you going to mail it? Well, I'll swim over there myself with a letter in my teeth. Kiss. Tell you what, every time you bring me a letter, I'll give you the same reward. Every time I bring you a letter? Well, all right. I'll give you the same reward. A nice big kiss. Gee, that's great, but I'm really sorry about something now. What's that? There's only one delivery a day. The mailman who walks their routes again. We thank you so much. Thank you very much, Marilyn.